300 years the Christian world endeavored to rescue from the infidel, the empty sepulcher of Christ. For 300 years the armies of the cross were baffled and beaten by the victorious hosts of an impudent impostor. This immense fact sowed the seeds of distrust throughout all Christendom and millions began to lose confidence in a god who had been vanquished by Mohammed. The people also found that commerce made friends where religion made enemies, and that religious zeal was utterly incompatible with peace between nations or individuals. They discovered that those who loved the gods most were apt to love men least that the arrogance of universal forgiveness was amazing, that the most malicious had the effrontery to pray for their enemies, and that humility and tyranny were the fruit of the same tree. For ages a deadly conflict has been waged between a few brave men and women of thought and genius upon the one side, and the great ignorant religious mass on the other. This is the war between science and faith. The few have appealed to reason, to honor, to law, to freedom, to the known, and to happiness here in this world. The many have appealed to prejudice, to fear, to miracle, to slavery, to the unknown, and to misery hereafter. The few have said, think. The many have said, believe. The first doubt was the womb and cradle of progress, and from the first doubt man has continued to advance. Men began to investigate, and the church began to oppose. The astronomer scanned the heavens, while the church branded his grand forehead with the word infidel, and now not a glittering star in all the vast expanse bears a Christian name. In spite of all religion, the geologist penetrated the earth, read her history in books of stone, and found hidden within her bosom souvenirs of all the ages. Old ideas perished in the retort of the chemist. Useful truths took their places. One by one, religious conceptions have been placed in the crucible of science, and thus far nothing but dross has been found. A new world has been discovered by the microscope. Everywhere has been found the infinite. In every direction man has investigated and explored, and nowhere in earth or stars has been found the footstep of any being superior to or independent of nature. Nowhere has been discovered the slightest evidence of any interference from without. These are the sublime truths that enable man to throw off the yoke of superstition. These are the splendid facts that snatched the scepter of authority from the hands of the priests. In the vast cemetery called the past are most of the religions of men, and there too are nearly all their gods. The sacred temples of India were ruins long ago. Over column and cornice, over the painted and pictured walls, cling and creep the trailing vines. Brahma, the golden, with four heads and four arms. Vishnu, the somber, the punisher of the wicked, with his three eyes, his crescent, and his necklace of skulls. Shiva, the destroyer, red with seas of blood. Kali, the goddess. Draupadi, the white-armed. And Krishna, the Christ all passed away and left the thrones of heaven desolate. Along the banks of the sacred Nile, Isis no longer wandering weeps, searching for the dead Osiris. The shadow of Typhon's scowl falls no more upon the waves. The sun rises as of yore, and his golden beams still smite the lips of Memnon. But Memnon is as voiceless as the Sphinx. The sacred fanes are lost in desert sands. The dusty mummies are still waiting for the resurrection promised by their priests. And the old beliefs, wrought in curiously sculptured stone, sleep in the mystery of a language lost and dead. Odin, the author of Life and Soul, Vili and Ve, and the mighty giant Ymir, strode long ago from the icy halls of the north, and Thor, with iron glove and glittering hammer, dashes mountains to the earth no more. 
Broken are the circles and the cromlechs of the ancient druids. Fallen upon the summits of the hills and covered with a century's moss are the sacred cairns. The divine fires of Persia and of the Aztecs have died out in the ashes of the past, and there is none to rekindle and none to feed the holy flames. The harp of Orpheus is still. The drained cup of Bacchus has been thrown aside. Venus lies dead in stone, and her white bosom heaves no more with love. The streams still murmur, but no naiads bathe. The trees still wave, but in the forest aisles no dryads dance. The gods have flown from high Olympus. Not even the beautiful women can lure them back, and Danaid lies unnoticed, naked to the stars. Hushed forever are the thunders of Sinai, lost are the voices of the prophets, and the land once flowing with milk and honey is but a desert and waste. One by one the myths have faded from the clouds, one by one the phantom host has disappeared, and one by one facts, truths, and realities have taken their places. The supernatural has almost gone, but the natural remains. The gods have fled, but man is here. Nations, like individuals, have their periods of youth, of manhood, and decay. Religions are the same. The same inexorable destiny awaits them all. The gods created by the nations must perish with their creators. They were created by men, and like men they must pass away. The deities of one age are the bywords of the next. The religion of one day and country is no more exempt from the sneer of the future than others have been. When India was supreme, Brahma sat upon the world's throne. When the scepter passed to Egypt, Isis and Osiris received the homage of mankind. Greece, with her fierce valor, swept to empire, and Zeus put on the purple of authority. The earth trembled with the tread of Rome's intrepid sons, and Jove grasped with mailed hand the thunderbolts of heaven. Rome fell, and Christians from her territory with the red sword of war carved out the ruling nations of the world, and now Christ sits upon the old throne. Who will be his successor? Day by day, religious conceptions grow less and less intense. Day by day, the old spirit dies out of book and creed. The burning enthusiasm, the quenchless zeal of the early church have gone. Never, never to return. The ceremonies remain, but the ancient faith is fading out of the human heart. The worn-out arguments fail to convince, and denunciations that once blanched the faces of a race excite in us only derision and disgust. As time rolls on, the miracles grow mean and small, and the evidences our fathers thought conclusive utterly fail to satisfy us.